Welcome back to a playoff edition of PAX What She Said. I am one of your co-hosts, Maggie Loney, joined as always by Perry Goldstein. And we now finally officially get to talk about the playoffs, the youngest team in the league, the Packers, going to number two seeded Dallas Cowboys, who are undefeated at home on like a 16-game win streak at home. Packers undefeated at AT&T Stadium, but we'll dive into all those crazy things later on in the episode. Perry, it's playoff football. It's wild card weekend. I cannot wait. I feel like this is bonus football for us. This is like truly bonus. I thought we would be off season, ready to talk about like the draft. I don't even know. Did we even watch the college football championships? We are focused. We are locked in. This is bonus football wild card weekend. <laughs> Seventh seed, ready to go in and do some damage. No seventh seed has ever won a playoff game. I did actually watch the college championship, and then I started my draft study today, which is very early for me. I don't know why I was so ambitious when the Packers are still playing football, but yeah. This is this is a crazy weekend. There's so many good playoff narratives. We kind of touched on it on Monday, but you've got you know, Jared Goff versus the Rams, Matt Stafford coming to Ford Field to play the Lions. You've got Tyree Kill and the Dolphins coming to Arrowhead to play the Chiefs. You've got Mike McCarthy and the Cowboys hosting the Packers. Like, you could not make these up. I know Deshaun Watson's not playing, but you've got the Browns and the Texans. Like, the football gods, the script makers, they did a really good job this season because this is just, this is laid out really nicely. I don't know. Did the football script writers go on strike? Because they be working. They work it. Um, yeah, they were the only ones that didn't strike this year. Just right. <laughs> so let's talk about the injury report real quick because we officially have two days worth of injury reports. So not the official, you know, doubtful or questionables for either side of the ball. However, um, I think the biggest takeaways, other than that, Jair Alexander is kind of an idiot <laughs> for messing up his ankle today. We are recording. Thursday evening. Um, so like I said, we don't have the official word on who is going to play versus not, but it really does feel like the Packers are about as healthy as to be expected. Um, a lot of guys are back being full participants. Um, the only did not practice today <laughs> were Jair, AJ Dillon and Elton Jenkins. Um, the Elton Jenkins injury for me, he was limited yesterday didn't practice today. I don't know if that's either a setback. I'm hoping it's just rest. Um, but he did play this past weekend and everyone else was either limited or full participant. So like I said, this is, a, this is about as healthy as they've been. Yeah. And I mean, there's some things here, like we don't know if AJ Dillon is trending towards playing and they're just kind of letting him rest the thumb. Cause now he's there with a neck injury in addition to the thumb. So we'll see. I know he's had that stinger since the Vikings game. So, you know, kind of what that means for him. Romeo Dobbs is back practicing after the chest injury. Christian Watson is still practicing. I know that didn't really mean anything going into last weekend and he was trending in the right direction and didn't play. But beyond that, yeah, I mean, I think it's also notable like Isaiah McDuffie has been really nice in spot duty, especially on special teams. And you've got Devondre and Quay, but he brought some really nice stuff to the inside linebacker position and he's trending in the right direction as well. So, I agree with you completely. This is about as healthy of a roster as we've seen probably this entire season. And what a time for them to actually have that. I know, right? It's all about getting hot at the right time. Um, as far as the Cowboys go, not a ton of notable injuries at the moment. Um, Stephon Gilmore still uh, did not practice, but they seem to be, and it could be a fib. You know, clearly we saw Matt LaFleur with his gamesmanship on the injury report, but um, it, the Cowboys have been saying that Stefan Gilmore is trending towards playing. Um, other than that, the other did not practice. were all um, that rest. So the Cowboys are also pretty healthy. So this is going to be, you know, a matchup of two very healthy teams, which quite frankly is like as a football fan, what you want to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I know their offensive line is a little bit banged up. You know, they're maybe not as elite, quote unquote, as they have been recently, just because they're dealing with some lingering injuries. But at this point in the season, I mean, I think everybody, I don't know when the Cowboys had their bye, but the Packers had theirs, what, week six? You know, like you're playing so many games straight at this point that everybody's got bumps and bruises at this point. So yeah, both squads relatively healthy. It seems like all of the 
key players are trending towards playing for both rosters. So let's let's segue then into the game itself. Let's dive what, in. Let's, let's uh, dive in, starting with start with the Cowboys offense and the Packers defense. Yeah, so this Cowboys offense, um, I feel like is a, I don't know if this is a, I'm just going to say it anyway. I feel like it's like a closeted juggernaut. Like, I feel like everyone this season was talking about the Dolphins, and now everyone's talking about the Ravens, and everyone has, like, these high-flying off. The Cowboys have been scoring points all season. Um, they pulled out ahead of the Eagles. Dak is the only quarterback ahead of Jordan Love to throw more touchdown passes this season. Like, they have some really awesome kind of scary weapons to contend with. Um, and I feel like their strengths are a little bit to the detriment of the Packers defense. Like they really match up poorly with the Packers weaknesses. Um, their run game is fine. Like I feel like the Packers, the way the defense has been playing will be able to handle this Dallas run game it's the passing offense that should scare you um especially with seeing that jair is not 100 percent uh the idea of going out there with carrington valentine and Corey valentine and Keyshawn nixon should not should strike fear into your heart as a backer fan because um Obviously, of CD Lamb, who's one of the best wide receivers in the league, and not just that, but he's incredibly versatile, and you know that they're going to move him around um, all over the place because he can play anywhere. He can be an X, he can be a Y, he can be a Z, he can be an ABC. But I feel like they're going to move him. Thank you for laughing at that. Uh, That's a good one. I feel like they're going to move him in a slot because Dak Prescott loves to throw over the middle of the field. Uh, that is where the Packers' weaknesses are right now, especially in coverage, right? Our linebackers in coverage, not what you want. We have seen Quay Walker and Devondre Campbell in coverage on very good wide receivers. We've seen Preston Smith in coverage on wide receivers. <laughs> it's not great, right? So if I'm Dallas, I'm getting CD in those opportunities because you're winning them 100% of the time. Um, and if I'm Joe Barry... I'm making sure that those don't happen as much as humanly possible. And I think what's so interesting is Matt LaFleur had talked about um, how he went back and watched last season's game, even though they're very different rosters, to just kind of get some ideas and get some tendencies and things. And Quay Walker did line up against CeeDee Lamb a couple times in that game last season, and it didn't go very well. But yeah. I think the Packers defense was okay with letting CeeDee get some opportunities because of the overall way that they were playing. So I'm curious this time if we'll see like Jair potentially shadowing because he didn't in 2022 and the Packers obviously still won that game in overtime, but this is a very different Dallas offense, 29.9 points per game. They've scored 30 plus points, 10 times this season, 40 plus points, five times this season. You mentioned it already. They're undefeated at home. Um, they're averaging 37.4 points per game at home this season. Like we're talking about a total shootout. CD Lamb, 1,700 Here. receiving yards. Jake yeah. Ferguson, their tight end, second on the team with like 700. Like CD's got over a thousand yards more than the second player on the team on offense. Like just ridiculous I'm so, numbers. I'm so glad you brought up Jake Ferguson because he's another like he's a a monster. DC, right? He's a monster. Dak loves to throw to him. And I think as Packers fans are starting to learn, right, having a big pass-catching tight end is a, always an amazing mismatch, and it's super fun when it's on your team and not super fun when it's against your defense. Shout and out Wisconsin so, Badgers, Jake Ferguson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for me, and I'm curious your thoughts here, you're thinking like, okay, well, girls, thanks, but how are we stopping them? And I think we said it after our Bears recap, and it – Bears repeating, haha, uh, pun intended. Um, this defense goes as the pass rush goes. Yes, and you, 1, and you mentioned it earlier. This offensive line is banged up. Um, still a very good offensive line, I think, even with injuries. Yes. A very good offensive line. I mean, yeah, I don't need to go into it. I think it's very clear, but this 
front needs to play like they did against Justin Fields. Dak is a lot less mobile, a lot less mobile. <laughs> um, and I think if you play like you did, you keep your lane integrity, you let each guy, you know, you do your 111, truly, you play as a cohesive unit, you will win. He's very difficult to bring down, just like Justin Fields is. I mean, he's a big, thick dude. That's why I always think of Dak. I'm like, thick with two Cs is that man. Um, After you saw his warm up with the flip of the hips, you're like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But that is going to be, I think, a huge key is just getting pressure on Dak um, and ensuring at least doing your damn best to knock him off his spot and trying to get maybe a handful of key stops sacks on third down. And the thing I think the Packers are going to have to be mindful of here with this Cowboys offense is that. Dak has like finally ascended to that upper echelon of quarterbacks that he's been unrattleable this season. And it's, we've seen him get very rattled in games in previous seasons. And, you know, we can talk about the Cowboys playoff record and all of those things, but you can sack him this season and he'll still go up and like next play throw for 40 yards. Like it is hard. Even if you back them up and put them into like second and long third and longs, he's very poised. And he will make plays this year. And that's something that I think is newer to his game. Something we haven't seen, you know, earlier on in his career. So that also presents a challenge because that's one of the things we talked about with like a young Packers offense is if you get them off their spot and put them into second and longs, third and longs, it can derail an entire series. And I don't think the Packers are going to have that kind of luck with Dak. He is going to stand in the pocket and he's going to find somebody and extend a drive and put the Cowboys in a really good situation. So especially when you're looking at, you know, a cow or a Packers defense, that's, I think their, their units averaging like 94.7 ratings for opposing quarterbacks. And Dak has exceeded that many, many times already this season. So good. yeah, he's, yeah, he's I mean, the, that was, he's the key. that was in the MVP conversation for a reason this year, mm -hmm. he's playing at like the top of his game and he was already a very, very high quality quarterback before this. Um, I want to bring up one more thing you brought up pre-show, which I think is really key here, especially for the offense and just in terms of like what this defense is going up against. And that's the kicker. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if Packers fans get a little bit of envy here, understandable that the Dallas Cowboys have Brandon Aubrey as their kicker. He's a rookie new to NFL football this year. Um, but he has just been phenomenal and I know that you know the broadcast joked last week about kind of cursing him because he was undefeated through seven or undefeated he didn't miss through 17 weeks and then he gets into week 18 and he misses two field goals both of them were between 30 and 39 yards he is perfect beyond 40 yards he's got 10 kicks over 50 yards and his long of the season is 60 so one of the things you're thinking about too here is if the Cowboys get to like the 45 yard line they're probably just trotting out their kicker like they really just need to get to midfield and they're probably scoring points. And this is an offense that are, that's already putting up like 35 plus points at home, largely probably because they're kicking field goals from midfield. So that adds another wrinkle to this too, is if the Cowboys can sustain drives and even get into remotely field goal range where they're comfortable taking a shot, their kickers been pretty damn reliable through the first for the regular season. And I know he had a couple botched kicks last week, but no, nah, he's, he's playoff ready. Wow. Yeah. And you're thinking about an offense that, or, sorry, a defense that kind of goes with the bend, don't break and is okay <laughs> with allowing field goals. Well, I don't know if we're going to see a lot of punts in this game. I will say though, I mean, like, I'm curious your thoughts on this, but I think, I think the Packers win if they hold this team to field goals. Like if yes. you're letting the Cowboys get into scoring range and they're settling for three, that's the recipe for success. You can give up three points. You cannot give up seven points to this offense. I completely agree with you. I think that, and I think the Packers being the first to score, getting, getting that first lead. And then I think, you know, this might be the nice segue into the flip side of the, the ball, but getting the early lead and allowing this defense to play with the lead, even if it's three, even if it's 3-0 on that first drive, I think will mean so much more because we see the way they play when it's the opposite. Um, so 
I'd like to see them get the ball first, if that's at all a possibility. I have no idea. I mean, obviously it's a coin flip, so we literally don't know. Um, <laughs> but I, I 100% agree with you. I think holding this offense to field goals is a win for the Joe Barry defense. If the Packers somehow come away, my I I'll rephrase I'll rephrase that. This game to me comes down to the way the Packers defense plays. Mm-hmm. I'm actually not, I'm less concerned about the way this offense is going to perform against the Dallas defense, and we're about to talk about it, than I am about the way this defense is going to play against the Cowboys offense. Yeah, and I mean, I think it's kind of cliche at this point to talk about it week after week, but when you have such a young team, one of the keys to success for this Packers defense has been maintaining time of possession. And when the Packers are able to kind of, you know, keep the game in their own hands, keep the ball, long sustained drives, no mistakes, that's how, that's the recipe for winning football games. And, you know, we've seen them in opportunities where they've had to go down and score and they've been able to do that as well. But how do you stop a high powered offense? You don't give them the football. So the Packers, you know, you want to see this as lopsided as possible when it comes to maintaining time of possession, because if Jordan Love has the ball, that means that Dak Prescott does not have the ball. And then the Packers defense is also resting as well. And I think one of the things here, Dak hasn't thrown too many interceptions this season, but the Packers are like 31st in the league in turnovers. I think they've had seven interceptions all season, maybe 31st in interceptions, not turnovers, but yeah, just really not taking the ball away. And I think that's that's a huge thing going into Sunday as well, is if they're able to steal a possession right. where they don't even have to settle for three and just give their offense another shot at the ball, especially if you're talking about like doubling up at halftime, you know, and getting the ball to start second half potentially. These are all ways that I think you mitigate this Cowboys high-powered offense. I think one of like the th- knocks against Dak historically has been he'll throw you a few. He'll give you one, yeah. Yeah. Is that the case this season? I I don't know his touchdown to interception ratio. I know he's throwing a lot of touchdowns. Nine picks, I think. Okay, so he's just having a very clean season. He's he's having a very good season, yeah. yeah. All right, so let's flip it then. Yeah, let's, I, I mean. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what to say, really. Like, I feel like the Packers, I don't want to see them get too cute. Like I, I want Matt and Jordan and this offense to just play their brand of offense. Yeah. Um, I, I think, and I don't know if I said this on a lot, like on a recorded line or if you and I were just chatting. Um, but for me, like, it feels like you give Aaron Jones his 20 plus touches in this game. You're setting this team up for success. Absolutely. Aaron Jones historically has wonderful backbreaking games down in Dallas. And he is a little bit of this defense's Achilles heel. And he is like the energizer bunny of this offense. The Packers are what nine and one when he gets 20 plus touches, I mean, they do not lose when he can run the football effectively. And look, that goes with the offensive line being able to run block against him. And that's like no small feat against this Cowboys front. So like, I'm not diminishing that by any means, but when you think about this Cowboys defense, you think about their pass rush, right? You think about Micah Parsons, you think about all they're able to do. And Jordan has been great against pressure this season. He's been great against your bland brand of pressure for man rush. He's been great against the blitz, but you mitigate that and what the Cowboys are able to do by running the football effectively. And who better to do that than with Aaron Jones, who's healthy and fresh because he's barely played this season. Yeah. Aaron Jones was like the focal point of the dope sheet. If you're, you know, a listener that likes the dope sheet as much as I do, but yeah, he's got like 370 yards in his games against the the Cowboys he's averaging five yards a carry he's over 110 yards in all three of his games like um yeah three times and it's just incredible he has a t- he has so many touchdowns and 
three 100 plus yard rushing games against Dallas, which is the most by any team like or any person against Dallas in that span. And I mean, it's no easy feat, right? We're talking about Dan Quinn, who is in conversations to potentially be a head coach, very good defensive coordinator. Their unit's fifth in the league in points again. So it's not like it's easy to score against this Cowboys. They're not like mm-hmm. putting up a ton of points and giving up a ton of points. They put up a lot of points and then they don't give away any points at all. Uh, they're averaging like 18 points a game, I think it was. So wow. tough sledding, but they're also allowing like 112 yards on the ground. They're like middle of the league. I think like 15th or 16th in yards on the ground. They're really good passing defense. We'll talk about that in a little bit here as well with some of these young receivers. But yeah, they're... Where this offense can capitalize, I think, is absolutely in the ground game. And if Aaron Jones, again, helps this Packers to offense sustain drives and burn clock, that's another key to success. A total win. Absolutely. Um, I don't even know. I mean, who running back to is in this game doesn't mean a whole lot to me. I mean, they literally didn't use a single other running back. My other key to this game, I talked about CD in the slot. My second one that strikes fear deep, deep, deep into my soul, maybe more so, quite frankly, because CD is going to get his is I mentioned him already, but it's Micah Mm -hmm. and it's not even and it should be, but it's not even Michael Parsons just like he's going to win wherever he's going to win. It's the idea of moving Micah Parsons inside and having him go up against Josh Myers that scares me because if I'm Dan Quinn and I'm smart, which he is, you just said it. I mean, he's a very, very, very good defensive coordinator. I'm looking at what are my weak points and the center is the weak point. And if you get pressure up the middle, it doesn't allow Jordan Love to step up in the pocket. And that's something that he's been very good at. And you can flush Jordan out and he can make plays like outside the pocket, but he's not nearly as, efficient naturally when he's outside the pocket as when he can step up in it. So Josh Myers needs to maybe have the game of his life. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean, absolutely. He's got what 14 sacks this season. It's a career high. He's always in the backfield. And I think the, the hardest part about a guy like Micah is he also plays inside. Like he can play inside linebacker and he can shade and he can do whatever the defense needs him to do. And he does. And then you have in the secondary of Jerome Bland, who leads the league in interceptions, has five pick sixes this season. He has like 290 return yards. Dude is always around the ball. So if it's at all tipped even like near him, Mm -hmm. he's coming down with that ball. And Mm -hmm. then if Stefan Gilmore plays, you've got interception machine on one sideline. And then you've got Stefan Gilmore, who's an all pro on the other boundary. And he's having like a rejuvenated rejuvenated season with the Cowboys so one of the best coverage corners to literally ever right so you've got 15 years (laughs) and I mean I think where the Packers can win on offense is with their speed you know the the Jaden Reed I'm gonna start on the left boundary and cut all the way across the field like these are the things yeah that you need to do against this this defense because Micah Parsons is a freak but Micah Parsons is not going to cover Jaden Reed you know so like the Packers can we we hope. You no, know. I agree with you. I hope. I mean, like, if I see that matchup on the field, like I'm taking it every single time. And right. So I, the same way you have to stretch them. You have to stretch. Absolutely. And yeah. if Christian Watson plays, like I think that's what's so exciting is thinking about all of the weapons. If there's some type of package they trot out with, like Luke, Tucker, Watson, Reed, and Aaron Jones. Sure. You know, like let's 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 go for some twelve like that. Mm-hmm. Just the, the the dynamic offense you can have with like Christian Watson's speed, Jaden Reed's speed, and then your big bodied pass catching tight ends. And I think there's going to be a lot of rubs and you're going to see a lot of Tucker Craft lined up against Micah Parsons to just give some help, some chips to mitigate some of the pass rush. Because, yeah, if Jordan Love is comfortable, I think he can pick away at this defense. But if he's rattled, then I think that's where the mistakes are going to come in. Yeah, I second everything you just said. You know, I think it's such an interesting matchup because, like I mentioned earlier, you know, there's a lot of weaknesses on the Packers defense that I think this Cowboys offense can exploit. And I feel very similarly on the flip side, which you you just mentioned all of them, right? The Packers have a number of fun weapons. We went through the injury report at the top of this show. All of them are about to be healthy. 
right? And so when you're game planning for this Packers offense, you're thinking about all of the speed, all of the ability, the two tight ends, right? One of whom is blocking his ass off right now. And a quarterback, let's talk about really quick, who's playing his best ball of the season at the moment. And you just mentioned it. He has not been able to be rattled in the last few games by any semblance of pressure. Um, even, I mean, they have been throwing blitzes at him for the last few weeks. He's getting the ball out. If this offensive line can give him two-ish, two and a half seconds, he's he's going to be good. Like, he is going to be able to move the ball. Um, so, again, I think and game's always won in the trenches. Like, defense will go as the pass rush goes. This game will go as the offensive line plays, which is why I'm keeping an eye on the Elton Jenkins injury while you're yeah. keeping an eye on the Zach Tom you know, injury, even though he came back in the game last, last week, you're hoping that Josh Myers can hold up against whatever pressure they sent his way. But like the offensive line has been playing quite well. They also pass or run blocked the best I've, I've seen them all season against the bears. So if they play like they did against the bears who have like a very good, like front, um, especially after getting Montez sweat, I think this offense can put up points. Mm -hmm. Um, For me, this offense, it's about the follow through. It's about the finish, right? I am not worried about them moving the ball against Dallas. It's can you finish with seven? Because like we said, if we can hold the Cowboys to three, that's a win. You need to finish with seven. If yeah, you're three's not going to cut it for you on no, offense. Like, you need to finish and uh, to, in order to walk out of Dallas with a win. Otherwise, it's just not it. So I don't know. I would love to see Matt be a little aggressive, not overly aggressive to the point of like being dumb. But if you're getting yourself in situations, you know, where you're at the, the goal line, like go for it on fourth and goal. You know, I, I think I'd like to see some aggression from him and kind of push Dan Quinn's defense to its brink. Yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, the name of the game is making the other team uncomfortable and both offenses have really convenient ways to do that for the opposing defenses. So I think this one, I will get to score predictions, obviously at the tail end of the show here, but it really feels like a shootout and maybe yeah. we're all in for a surprise and it's like 17, 14 because the offenses aren't able to get rolling and it's like a defensive show out here, but yeah, Jordan love is playing some of his best ball. Dak Prescott is playing, playing some of his best ball. Like their numbers are insane. They both had over 80% completion percentages last week, over 120 passer ratings. Like they are coming into this game as hot as they can possibly be. And that's, what's going to be so fun, but Let's I think, now. wait, Go sorry, ahead. before we switch, I think one of the more fun things about this game too, just as, from taking, I know we've, we've been like pretty objective about like, you know, just from a Packer fan standpoint is like, this is kind of playing spoiler, right? This is, you've heard it all week. I'm not, I'm sorry to use the term again, but like, this is a house money game. You can go in and like, what do you have to lose kind of? And, and that's a really fun attitude to have, I think, especially on the road. Um, so like I said, aggression is fun, but that attitude when you bring it, I don't know. I, you know what I'm trying to say right now? Like, it's just a different, you're going to, there's expectations for the Cowboys. And I think we're going to get into this a little bit when we talk about the coaching implications of this game. But like the Cowboys have expectations of a push. The Packers have none of that. They can do, they can play the way they play. They're going to learn and grow from this regardless. So I don't know. I'm excited to see what they do against probably the best team that they're going to play, at least so far this season. I think this is probably the most difficult matchup um, because the Chiefs are just not necessarily what we thought that they were. Um, But yeah, I mean, go in and like kind of be the spoiler. This is this, the Bears tried to be spoiler last week. They couldn't get it done. Like, can you go into Dallas and mess up their season? Like I, I talked to Mark about this, right? Cause his Browns are obviously in the playoffs and he's always the kind of person that like, doesn't want to have expectations for his football team because he's been let down by it. And we yeah. were talking about it. And I said, it's so interesting this season as a Packers fan, 
Because when, like genuinely, when was the last time the Packers were underdogs in a playoff game? When was the last time that they weren't favored in a playoff game? Never. And you could argue like on the road against, you know, the Niners or things like that. But the Packers always had a shot in every playoff game that they were in. Like they were always respected as an opponent. And I'm not saying Dallas is overlooking them or anything like that. But it's very different, this Packers team, as Packers fans, to go in and say like, well, we still want to win. We still expect to win. Like you don't go out and play losing football, but playing spoiler is a very different role for the Packers than we've ever seen. Mm-hmm. At least, you know, not since like the, the early nineties or the eighties here, but yeah. depending on how long you've been uh, yeah. watching the team. So it's just a very different dynamic. And I think I, I'm going to, I don't have the quote directly in front of me, but what I really liked was AJ Dillon saying like, we're not just happy to be here. Like, you know, it's not just like, oh, we're not just like, hey, we made it to the dance. How cool. It's like, no, we still have expectations. And the quote I always keep thinking of is like, you don't know what you don't know. So like this Packers team is so young. A couple guys have playoff experience, obviously, especially on the defensive side of the ball. But there's a lot of guys who are just going to come in there and get a ton of experience and win or lose. We talked about it at the top of the show. Like you could not ask for a better kind of foundational learning piece for these rookies than to be a wild card, to go into a stadium like Dallas where they're undefeated at home Mm -hmm. in the playoffs and experience that atmosphere. And for Jordan Love to get it in his first year as a starter, like it's just the stage is setting itself for some really, really fun football on Sunday. It's going to be very fun. It's a great storyline. It's a great matchup. Like just as a fan of football, of good football, it's going to be a good game. Um, you know, Jaden Reed is having one of the best seasons as a rookie that we've seen in a while. I mean, he got, did you see he got offensive rookie of the year votes? I mean, he's not going to win it, but he's like in the conversation. He's had the best season ever from a Packer and he scored a touchdown in the last, what is it? Six away games. He's a scoring (laughs) machine travel on the road. So it's just fun. All of it's fun. Um, I'm certainly going to enjoy it. I'm trying to decide if I want to watch at a bar with friends or if I want to watch in my home with anxiety. Um, but before <laughs> we, <laughs> but before we wrap, um, we can't. We have to talk about coaching because while Rogers is gone and many players who were on the teams that Big Mike coached are gone, Mike McCarthy will always and forever be associated with the Green Bay Packers. Um, And so, you know, there's that. And also there's been some weird chatter from his owner about whether (laughs) how you feel about Jerry Jones is how you feel about Jerry Jones um, about whether he is safe or not after this incredible Dallas season which is going to be kind of based on how they do in the playoffs. And like I said before, their expectations are a deep push, um, which they should. They should, they should be, that. yeah. Their, their team is phenomenal and they have a very high seed. They should expect that. If they lose, should Mike McCarthy's seat be hot? I say no. I think Jerry Jones is crazy, but... I mean, everything gets complicated right now that you've got Bill Belichick available. Like, we know how Jerry Jones feels about him. There were rumors, you know, going even before the playoffs that Dan Quinn was next in line at head coach if Mike McCarthy doesn't get it done or get them at least to, like, a championship game. And that's tough. Like, however you feel about Mike McCarthy, he is a legend. And I I have his stats here because I don't want to get them wrong, but... He's the only head coach in Cowboys history to go three straight seasons with 12 plus wins. The only coach in Dallas history, like for starters, that's incredible. He's made the playoffs 11 times. Most of this obviously with the Packers. So grain of salt there, but won eight division titles made four NFC championship games, obviously won Super Bowl 45. So he never did that. Hall of Fame, Jimmy Johnson? I mean, maybe the caveat is that the seasons were shorter. 
but like yeah. still 12 games three years in a row and i mean yes the cowboys have been to three playoff games under mike mccarthy they're one and two so not a great playoff record but just his tenure as a head coach and i guess maybe that's like i don't know it, it's just hard to think about him not getting the respect of another season but i guess to the argument being if you've won 12 games three straight seasons and you're one and two in the playoffs can you can you get over the hump because if you're winning 12 games you're getting a good seed in the playoffs yeah i mean that's just i guess a judgment call as an owner who's been chasing a ring for quite a long time but for me with coaching it's like the grass is not always greener. Yeah. Ask Bears fans. <laughs> and so when you have a coach like Mike, who has the record that you just described, and yes, you're in this cycle, you're thinking, well, if I do it now, look at my options. Yeah. Is it going to be better? Like the, is the juice worth the squeeze? How much better are you going to get? I don't know. On the flip side of that, just because I was genuinely curious, obviously Matt LaFleur and Mike McCarthy have only faced off one time last season. That's when the Packers won in overtime. Um, LaFleur is 2-0 and against Dallas. You know, he's he's beaten them twice. Um, and in his fifth year of coaching, he's been to the playoffs four times. Obviously, we know that already. He's always had something to play for in the regular season, which is very exciting. And he's got a postseason record of 2-3. and three. So... Mm. We'll see what happens, but not bad numbers for Matt LaFleur. Obviously, would have yeah. liked some games back as Packer fans recently, but... <laughs> you know, playoff numbers are so funny to me because, like, you're always going to be disappointed in your playoff record unless you win the Super Bowl. Right. I, I would consider Matt's tenure a success. Absolutely. And, like... And yes, we have had many a disappointment because expectations were always ring because we had Aaron Rodgers. But, you know, we turn the page now. Windows back open. Let's see. Um, I'm really excited for this game, even if they lose. I, I, I mean, I'm expecting to lose. I guess we can do their score predictions now. I'm fully expecting to lose, mainly because they're going into Dallas. I think you play this game on a neutral playing field. I might feel differently about it. Um, but going into Dallas, I mean, they're undefeated. Although, can't stay undefeated forever. So, who knows? But I think it's going to be high scoring, and I think it's going to be very, very, very fun to watch. Yeah. So, do you have a, do you have a score prediction? Because I've been going back and forth on so many. Um... Like 31 28 Dallas. Yeah. I, Peter Bukowski on Lockdown Packers basically said the way he picks a winner is do I think one of these teams can win by double digits? And in this particular instance, if I had to say one of the teams was going to win by double digits, I would expect it to be the Cowboys because I'm just not sure what if the Packers defense could hold up. Do I yeah. think the Packers can win this game? 1,000%. I absolutely think that they can. But logically, thinking about all the things we talked about and the mismatch and even the experience in the room, it feels like the edge goes to Dallas. But I agree that I think it's going to be really high scoring. So I would say like 35-28. Like I think the Packers yeah. are going to get everything they got. And I think, <laughs> I hate to put this into the universe, but... It also just feels like a game where the the Cowboys get the walk off field goal. Like after 2016 with the kicker that they have, if this thing ends like 28 28 and there's like five seconds left and Brandon Aubrey just trots out from like to hit a 60 yarder, like that feels like Look, that's something that if could the happen. Packers, if this season, this team goes toe to toe with what are they, the two seed? Yeah. Best the offense in the league. Best offense in the league and force them into a situation where it's a walk off field goal. Like, that is, I know it's not a win, but that is a freaking win. Like, this team 
and where we thought they would be at, that would be like leaps and bounds ahead. So I think, yeah, sick. That's and awesome. I think, I think the best part about this is that you're going to the playoffs in a season and the Packers, you know, 1265 is always going to say they have playoff aspirations, right? They're not going to come out and be like, Oh my God, <laughs> we <thought> we were <laughs> going to go six and 11. Like, look at us. But to go into the playoffs with such a young team, when you do kind of retool next season and you look at the draft and you think about where you're at and what you're building off, like the foundation just gets so much sweeter. If you're talking about like the Panthers with a young quarterback, like, there's a really uncertain future in a lot of franchises and a lot of buildings. So to have the Packers be quote unquote rebuilding and still get to the playoffs and get all of this experience, even a loss is a win. And I know that, you know, we're probably going to get flack from that because you obviously always want to no. win a football game, but it is what it is. And it just, it's such a good building block for the future of this team and especially this offense. And I think that's why it's so exciting. Yes, it is. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> that's it. That's that's all that's we got. There's a lot that's writing all she on wrote. That's all she wrote. It's gonna be a really, really fun weekend, obviously. Super wild card weekend. Two games on Saturday, three games on Sunday, one game on Monday night. We'll figure out when we're gonna record, right? You know, we'll see potentially if the Packers win. We'll probably wait till Tuesday because we'll have to see how the game shakes out. Well, if they win, they're going to San Fran. But regardless, we'll have to see what happens with the playoff picture Monday night between the Bucks and the Eagles. Thank you, as always, for watching the show or listening anywhere you find us on all of your favorite podcasting platforms. You can find the podcast on Twitter at PWSS Podcast. You can find Perry on Twitter at Perry underscore Goldstein. You can find me on Twitter at Maggie J. Loney. Thank you for watching the show on YouTube. If that's how you get to us, like and download the show, subscribe. We appreciate everything that you do. And we're going to be back, win or loss, Monday or Tuesday to talk about everything and look ahead to what's next for the Packers. So enjoy the game on Sunday because it is going to be a damn good one. And go Pack Go. Go Pack Go.